Thank you. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 11398 in the name of Alec Rowley on impact of Moss Moran flaring. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Alec Rowley to open the debate. Mr Rowley, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to begin by thanking those members who signed my motion to enable this debate to take place today and the Labour business manager for agreeing time for the debate. I was a teenager when planning was first sought for the most modern petrochemical plant in Fife and when the work on the site first began. There was a view locally that many jobs were to be created, not just in the construction of the site, but also there was to be a great boon for the local economy on the downstream work that would follow, as well as the spin-off opportunities of new industry and agriculture being fed from the site. It is true that construction brought plenty of work and the local economy uh, has benefited, but nothing like what was envisaged from those who were the strongest advocates of the plan in those early days. Throughout the years, there has continued to be concerns expressed about what chemicals do come from the site into the air that we breathe locally, and I have worked over many years with the former area chair of the Cowan Beath area, Councillor Willie Clark, bringing NHS 5 to the table to discuss those concerns. But I believe it would be fair to say that for much of that period, the community has not lived in fear when it came to the safety of the plant itself. That is until these last few years where we have seen the episodes of unplanned flaring increase at a pace that is causing major concern for the communities around the plant and indeed much further afield. And that is the key point I want to make today. It is the key point I have made in correspondence to the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform. And most important of all, it is the key point that local people in growing numbers are increasingly making. We have lost confidence that the plan is safe. Why has this come about? It is because every time there is an episode of unplanned flaring, it means something has broken in the plant. For flaring is a safety mechanism for when the plant is unable to run and when it is unplanned, it means something has gone wrong. I don't know how many people in here have witnessed the flare of Mossmorn. At night time, the pulsating orange glow illuminates the surrounding towns. Ironically, a flaring incident took place during Earth Hour this year, lighting up the sky of Fife when all around the world, people were turning their lights off to show solidarity with protecting our environment. I was told by someone driving past during a flaring incident that they felt as if they were driving past Mordor. <laughs> But it is not just the fact that the sky is lit up at night. The levels of vibration, the levels of noise are very frightening for residents. I would refer you to the website of the Mossmorn Action Group where you can read a summary from 169 issues reported by local residents. These include vibration and humming sleep disturbance, irritable throat, eye, skin and breathing related issues, excessive noise levels, headaches and migraines, chemical smells, stress and anxiety, pain and ringing in the ears and soot and particulate matter. A lady from Longfinans contacted me yesterday when she saw in the local press that we were having this debate today and wanted me to point out that the ornaments in her house visibly shake. A resident from Kelty recently described it to me as being like a helicopter landing in the back garden. And last June, on a beautiful sunny afternoon, I was in shock as I saw a thick black smoke belch from the top of a stack and form a massive black cloud that sat over the top of the houses in Loch Gelly, Glen Craig, Cross Hill, Loch Hoare and Balingary. It cannot be right and it is not right that people in those communities are having to go through these experiences. It cannot be right and it is not right that people are now living with the fear of the Mossmorn chemical plant on their doorsteps. 
And this is why I, along with many other politicians and local groups, have been demanding action. A final warning was issued by SEPA in relation to the flaring event that took place in June last year. Yet following that incident, there were unplanned flaring events in October, March and again in May. To be clear, these are not short episodes of a few hours. These events are usually continuous and last for days on end. It is simply not acceptable for people to put up with this for this long, with little being done to address the problem at its core. One of the key questions is why does the plant keep breaking down? It is a 30-year-old plant and we need to know what the issues are and how they can be addressed. The fact that breakdowns are increasing in number and therefore unplanned flaring events increase in number as the plant gets older must be addressed. This is a question that I feel must be answered by the operator of the plant and by the public authorities and ultimately by the government. Six days ago, SEPA announced that the operators of the petrochemical facilities, which are run by Fife Ethylene uh, Plant by both Shell and ExxonMobil, are to face an inquiry in a joint investigation by SEPA and the Health and Safety Executive. In conclusion, presiding officer, this has been welcomed across the communities of Fife, but we need to know that there will be transparency. SEPA have said, and I quote, compliance with Scotland's environmental rules is simply non-negotiable. The people of Fife need the confidence that this is the case and the confidence in the safety of their surroundings and the place in which they live. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Rowley. I call David Torrance to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Mr Torrance, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to thank Alex Rowley for bringing this motion to the Chamber today to discuss the impact of Moss Morn flaring on our environment and our local communities. Moss Morn is one of Europe's largest ethylene plants. The plant, which opened in 1986, was the first to be specifically designed to use natural gas liquids from the North Sea as feedstock. The Fife ethylene plant in Moss Morn is an extremely important asset to the community and the wider Fife area as well as asset to Scotland's energy industry with an annual capacity of 830,000 tonnes of ethylene and a contribution of more than 20 million a year to the Scottish economy. It is also one of Europe's biggest and most modern ethylene plants and is amongst Fife's largest employers with 170 employees and 50 core contractors. Their highly skilled apprenticeship scheme has seen many ex-apprentices go on to join the workforce. When you consider that more than 70% of the employees live within six miles of the plant, the economic benefits Return to a local area from a highly skilled workforce at Mossbourne are obvious. I'd also like to take a moment to highlight a long-standing and extensive programme of community support and engagement from the Fife Ethylene plant, including sponsorship of a Safe Drive Stay Alive roadshow, attended by over 30,000 pupils, various theatre and lunch trips for some 1,000 senior citizens, and invaluable support for Energy Action Scotland. However, we are here today because of recent flaring incidents, which have impacted greatly on local communities effects of which should not be underestimated and cannot be ignored. Whilst flaring is a vital feature which ensures the ongoing safety of the plant, the noise, vibration and bright light emitted during these unplanned incidents, will have an, which have increased in frequency over the last year, has caused much alarm and distress amongst local residents. The light from the elevated flare can be seen for many miles from the plant. Fife Ethylene Plant do seek to minimise the occurrence of these incidents as much as possible and set about making serious improvements following the elevated flaring in June 2017. Improvements in maintenance programmes, continued investment in new technology and research and improving improvements to the flaring system through the use of best technology have all been undertaken with a view to alleviating issues of unplanned flaring. Regrettably, these, will not, these problems will not have been solved overnight and we have seen recently when further incidents occurred. For this reason, I welcome recent extensive, extensive discussions between local residents, politicians, environmental groups and regulators, and I am pleased to see a continued engagement from ExxonMobil and Shell, as I believe a solution to these problems will only be achieved through a true multi-partnership working. In conclusion, presiding officer, I would like to once again thank Al Raleigh for bringing this motion to the chamber this afternoon, as well as those involved in their efforts to reduce the impact of flaring incidents. 
Firstly, a more small action group for rallying the local community together, organising extremely well attended meetings, informing residents on developments, taking on their concerns, ensuring a continued high profile of the issue raised, and in so doing so, putting pressure on regulated bodies to investigate. SEPA and the Health and Safety Executive for a commitment to a joint investigation. I must mourn who apologise to myself and to the local community is very much appreciated. I am extremely pleased by the coordination between relevant stakeholders in responding to incident. Cooperation from all groups is crucial at this point to mitigate the environment and social impacts of unplanned flaring, as well as to prevent future incidents, any further incidents in the future. This plant has seen a consistently high self safety and health environment performance and a long-standing history of compliance. I'm confident by working together we can find a resolution for these problems. Thank you very much, Mr. Torrance. I call Alexander Stewart, followed by Claire Baker. Mr. Stewart, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to take part in the debate and would congratulate Alex Riley for having us the opportunity to do this this afternoon. The most modern community have lived alongside the plant for decades, but there now seems to be concerns over the last three years where the safety of the plant is becoming more problematic. And I'm delighted that last week uh, that uh, the most modern chemical plant is now to have a top-level joint investigation by the Health and Safety Executive and also by SEPA. The inquiry has focused on SEPA's uh, issues when they had to produce a final warning, uh, and that was to do with the flaring that took place 12 months ago. But SEPA at the time indicated that, uh, and described that as preventable and unacceptable. So we've had a flaring that is preventable and unacceptable. Residents from a huge radius around the complex are obviously very distressed. The, the, that flaring lasted for nine days, and as individuals have said, it sounds like a jet engine uh, going off living next to it. And we do acknowledge and understand that flaring is part of the safety issue, uh, and it's part of the safety programme, but many residents have been kept awake and are very anxious about what is happening in their community. We've already heard from Mr. Raleigh about the noise, uh, the pollution, the problems that individuals are having to deal with. They're not able to sleep, the distress that ha causes to children, the distress that causes to animals uh, who, who live round about there. The plant's monitoring itself uh, is, is, is limited. Uh, and the air quality that is happening in the surrounding area has been talked about in the past, Deputy Presiding Officer. There is a real uh, level of concern because there's not the whole idea about what kind of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and other pollutants adjacent to the plant are being dealt with when flaring takes place. And more importantly, uh, we've seen that for short and long term uh, for adults health care. Now, NHS Fife have been actively involved as one of the partners to see what's happening in the community. But there are concerns about the development of, of some of that. And, and SEPA has acknowledged that we have to work together to try and re resolve that. So we've already heard that flaring's taken place uh, a year ago, and there's been other ones that took place in October and March. Uh, and as we've seen, as I've said, 33 years that plant has been at that location, uh, with not having had that much breakdown or elements within the community. But in recent times, in recent times, we've seen things progressing. Uh, and as I said before, the flaring has to be considered. Uh, and we've been told that it was a pump that caused some of the flaring over the last few months and over the last year. But that is potentially down to maintenance. Yep. The maintenance of the plant is now being questioned. Uh, and individuals are right to do that. Company is involved. It is the company involved in cutting corners. Questions are being asked. We've had public meetings. The very first public meeting I went to, uh, the, the, the plant didn't even send representatives. And that enraged the community absolutely enraged the community and it, they were right to do so. Uh, the most modern itself, ExxonMobil and, and Shell, uh, have worked in the community. That has already been talked about, but it's been up to individuals from the, from the action group, from councillors, from MSPs, MPs, who have got this whole thing up and running in the last few months. Uh, and I pay credit to all of them who've actually achieved that, because without that, we'd once again, it would be quite tight-lipped what was going on in the facility, and no one was aware what was going on. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I'm delighted that SEPA uh, is now carefully investigating and looking, and I'm delighted that the Health and Safety Executive is now taking some more interest in the plant itself, because the community deserves nothing less the community has seen cross-party support, and that cross-party support has and will protect them in the future. That's what we're here to do, to ensure that they are protected, but the community are fearful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and it's up to all of us to ensure that that is not the case and we protect them in the future. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. I call Claire Baker to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Ms. Baker, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to be taking part in this important debate, and I thank Alec Rowley for bringing this opportunity to the Chamber. I acknowledge the consistent interest that Alec Rowley has taken in this issue over the years, as well as other members around the Chamber. And I'd also like to recognise the work of Helen Eady, MSP, who was elected in 1999 to represent Cowden Beath, a member who we all still miss. And Helen did work hard to endeavour to represent the concerns of her constituents over the ExxonMobil and Shell UK plant in Mossmorran, in particular the issue of unplanned flaring. I would also like to recognise the work of local people, the relevant community councils and the action group in raising concerns, as well as working with the operators with SEPA, with Fife Council and other partners to try and address concerns. As the motion identifies, the past year has heightened concerns. I welcome the joint investigation by the Health and Safety Executive and SEPA following the recent unplanned flaring incidents at the plant. They have a crucial role to play here. It is very concerning that SEPA has served final warnings on the operators ExxonMobil and Shell UK and has described prolonged flaring in June last year as preventable and unacceptable. In response to this, the Health and Safety Executive will be serving operating permit variations next week, requiring the companies to strengthen controls, which will, have an, which will hopefully have an impact on the noise and vibration coming from any future flaring. These measures have been long awaited by residents around the area who have complained of increased disruption that they have experienced from the site. Some are saying that the noise levels, the vibrations and the light pollution is keeping them awake at night. And concerns have also been raised about the impact on health, in particular on those with existing health conditions, such as lung conditions or chronic illness, which can be exacerbated by inter interrupted sleep and aggravation from air pollution. Communities have withstood unplanned flaring in October last year, in March this year, and again in May. And I am pleased that the Health and Safety Executive and SEPA are saying that they are listening carefully to community calls for a root and branch review, which will examine issues at the plant. In response to that, it is important that the work that they undertake, the joint investigation with HSE and review of operating permits, is robust and transparent, so that the local community can rightfully be informed about what happened with the flaring incidents in October, March and May. There is also still the potential for enforcement action in relation to these recent incidents, which remain under investigation. The recent joint meetings organised by Leslie Laird MP with key stakeholders, and including many of the MSPs in the Chamber this afternoon, as well as representatives from ExxonMobil and Shell, SEPA, local politicians and community groups, has been a positive development. The meetings have been an opportunity to discuss concerns over the plant, make clear our concerns to the operators and work towards solutions. Alec Rowley has covered many of the key issues, but there are a few areas I'd like to highlight. Firstly, opened in 1985, there are issues with the age and condition of the plant, but that can't be an excuse. SEPA, in their final warning letter in April, said there were failures in maintenance practices leading to extended periods of flaring. That is not good enough, and the plant must be brought up to a higher standard. In the recent meeting, Shell said that they were investigating the best available technology. This work must be prioritised. Exxon said they were preparing an action plan with a timescale for elevated flaring to end. This must be expedited. These issues must be addressed if the plant is to have a future. Secondly, communication with the local community must be improved. And over the years, the plant has had a working group with community councils, but they need to recognise that communication and engagement methods are changing and there needs to be more proactive communication with the impacted communities. And thirdly, I support the calls for greater air quality monitoring. I do recognise the level of compliance with applicable laws and regulations, but we mustn't be complacent and we must be vigilant and thorough. And I support calls for increased air quality monitoring around the surrounding area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Baker. I call Mark Ruskell to be followed by Liz Smith. Mr. Ruskell, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Alec Rowley for bringing forward this debate? And I'd also like to thank the Moss Moran Action Group, who've given a strong voice to communities who for decades have lived in the shadow of this plant. And it's about time we listened and acted, because over the years, there has been a collective failure of Fife Council, SEPA, and NHS Fife to fully recognize the suffering of communities and then hold the operators to account. Why has it taken years for noise monitoring inside homes to be carried out? Why is it acceptable that families face sleepless nights with only the cold comfort of an excuse that flaring is a safety measure? There's been no effective representative, representative voice so far. It's all very well having a community liaison group handing out a wee bit of charity funding, but not at the expense of proper scrutiny. 
The air pollution monitoring group's remit is too narrow, has been hampered by a lack of robust data. And anyway, air pollution is only one part of the problem. It's the multiple effects of noise, light, vibration, and air pollution together that are destroying people's quality of life. Now, I welcome that the Minister for Public Health has now written to SEPA after our recent meeting, asking them to monitor noise, vibration, and light pollution inside homes. There has at least been an acknowledgement of this issue now from SEPA. However, I'm not impressed with the response from NHS Fife this week to my letter asking them to investigate the health impacts of flaring. They're passing the buck, claiming it's not their responsibility, saying the sample size around Moss Moran is too small to investigate. We'll try telling families that are kept awake for days on end that their suffering is not, is not statistically significant. I ask the Scottish Government to take leadership on this, commission a body that can study these impacts, and I'm sure that there are many others living in the shadow of other plants in Scotland that would boost the sample size. Presiding officer, in recent months, I've spoken to a number of former employees of the Exxon side of the operation at Moss Moran. They've all told me of a corner-cutting culture at Exxon, stuck in the 1990s. Yet a different approach at Shell seems to be in place, one which goes beyond simple legal compliance. And it's clear that the increase in flaring has happened because Exxon will not shut the plant down for longer periods to allow for proper maintenance and investment. Their objective of keeping the plant running at all costs, at all times, is leading to problems. It's tripping out safety systems during maintenance, which then leads to longer, more frequent flaring incidents. Exxon is, in effect, externalizing its maintenance shutdown costs on surrounding communities. Sleep is being stolen to pay for shareholder profit. And I demand that SEPA and HSC, in their joint investigation of the plant, look at this critical issue of planned shutdowns. Disruptive flaring can and should be minimized. If it requires a rebuild of the flaring infrastructure, then the operators should see this as an investment in the future of the plant. And SEPA must give communities confidence that a final warning is just that. It should do what it says on the tin. The operators must get the message that they can't just rack up environmental breaches like parking tickets. Repeated breaches are not a simple operational cost to be absorbed. This is about consent, and communities do not give their consent to having their lives ruined. There needs to be action. Moss Moran needs to be shut for proper maintenance, or it needs to be forced to shut. Thank you very much. I call Liz Smith, last speaker in the open debate. Ms Smith, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And may I echo the thanks to Alex Rowley for securing this debate and to the other MSPs and MPs who've been assiduous in their responses to the local community, many of whom, as we've heard, remain very concerned about what the future will hold. Whether you live in the immediate vicinity of Moss Moran or in the other areas of Fife and Kinrosshire or across the water in Edinburgh, Moss Moran is well-defined as the very large gaseous ball of orange in the sky, or as Alex Rowley uh, commented, sometimes heavy black smoke. It's an alarming sight at times, which notwithstanding the recent announcement of a joint investigation by SEPA and the Health and Safety Executive, remains the principal focus of concern for many communities across the area. Now, there are several members speaking in this debate who have much more experience than I do of recent public meetings, but of those constituents who've written to me, the majority have cited transparency as the main issue. They want to know the details about the ageing plant, most especially about whether there are fundamental failings within the plant structure, why the pump failed, what tests have been undertaken with regard to air pollution and possible health risks, what the results were, and who knew what when in terms of the decision making. These are perfectly understandable and legitimate questions. For example, when SEPA says that there is an unplanned flaring incident, that it is preventable, we need to know exactly what evidence supports that view, why the two companies were unable at the time to de deal satisfactorily with the concern, and why since then it appears to have taken considerable length of time for more facts to emerge. This obfuscation has only served to heighten tensions. Likewise, the arrival on occasion of several, several emergency vehicles gives local people little cause for comfort. Nor does the noise and the air pollution that have been spoken about by several other members. So I have to say, for me, it's full transparency that should be the priority, and we need it as soon as possible. We need it not only as an independent, comprehensive investigation into what's gone wrong in the past, but we need safety assurances 
about the present and most especially about the future. Now, I have no doubt that there is a delicate balance to be struck between ensuring that there is a safe production environment and also ensuring that Most Moran's position as Europe's largest ethylene plant can be maintained and enhanced, not least because it's important to support the delivery of the maximum potential in North Sea's resources. It's clear, very clear in recent months, that that's where the tensions have lain and where there have not always been clear lines of responsibility and, just as importantly, the clear lines of accountability. Whilst both ExxonMobil and Shell claim that they are working very hard in this regard, including the provision of daily updates, there still appears to be some mistrust within the local community. And addressing that is perhaps the most important priority. And I think it will come down to clarity over legal responsibilities and exactly what obligations the two companies will have in the context of CEPA's final warning. CEPA seems content that the new operating permit variations which will be served on ExxonMobil and Shell will be the necessary means of enforcing these renewed legal obligations on the two companies. That's good, but there remains the statement from both companies that they already believe that they are complying with these legal requirements. And of course that begs the question about what would happen and who would be proven to be correct should that matter be taken to the courts. Deputy Presiding Officer, this is a deeply worrying issue for all of the local community, not just because of the safety concerns, but because hitherto not all the relevant answers have been forthcoming. That has to change, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I hope this debate will pursue that. Thank you very much. I call Rosanna Cunningham to close to the Government Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I start by thanking Alec Rowley uh, for initiating this debate on a matter that I know has been of significant concern to local residents and indeed to the constituency MSP, Annabelle Ewing. Can I also just acknowledge Claire Baker's mention of Helen Eady? Um, I was convener of the Health Committee 2003 to 2007 and uh, uh, Helen Eady was a member of that committee. I can absolutely assure uh, members uh, who perhaps weren't here at that time that Helen was an absolute terrier when she took up issues and the parliament is the poorer uh, for her absence. A number of other members today have highlighted specific areas of concern in connection with this uh, particular topic and I think Alec Rowley rightly highlights the concerns and indeed fears of residents themselves. I recognise the significant impact that incidents such as these can have on the quality of people's lives. The level of disruption that people have experienced is simply not acceptable. I think it is important to acknowledge that from the outset. As David Torrance laid out, Moss Morin is, of course, one of Scotland's largest and most important industrial sites. It does make a significant contribution to the economy, but it should operate in a way that is sustainable and that minimises the potential for adverse impacts on the local community and the environment more generally. The site is regulated under the Pollution Prevention and Control Regulations. This means that the plant requires a permit to operate and the permit sets strict controls on a whole range of environmental issues. Regulation of sites such as the Musmorin complex is of course, as everybody knows, a matter for the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. SEPA is an independent regulator which grants and varies permits based on expert analysis and guidance. I am reassured by the strong and consistent message coming from SEPA that compliance with permitting conditions is an absolute requirement, not simply an option. As Alec Rowley flagged up, SEPA issued final warning letters earlier this year. And SEPA have committed to reviewing the permits of both ExxonMobil and Shell at the Mosmorin complex, and permit variations are due to be served on both operators today. Analysis of the information gathered during recent flaring events will be considered by SEPA when deciding what course of action to take. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to prejudge what action SEPA should take in relation to enforcement, but I do think it is reasonable for residents to expect SEPA to take effective action to address non-compliance when it occurs. I'm aware that the SEPA Chief Executive Terry Ahern met with local partners last week to set out face-to-face -face the action it is taking. And I know that that was a welcome development. This includes launching the joint investigation mentioned by members 
with the Health and Safety Executive into the issues that have arisen at the plant. And this will allow for coordinated action to address the causes of the flaring problem. Mark Rusko uh, mentioned the uh, uh, meeting that he had with Aileen Campbell, the Minister for Public Health, recently. Um, that was a meeting to address specific concerns in relation to the public health impacts of flaring. Uh, I, the Minister has indeed subsequently written to SEPA's Chief Executive requesting further information on the work being done to assess those public health issues. A previous independent modelling study carried out on behalf of SEPA did assess the impact of emissions during flaring and concluded that the long and short term predicted concentrations of pollutants were well within air quality standards for protecting human health. However, I appreciate that the noise and vibration issues do remain a particular concern to local residents as well. And as I've already indicated, the Minister for Public Health has written now to SEPA to seek reassurance on those public health issues. In conclusion, today, I think, has shown the gravity that the Scottish Parliament attaches to environmental performance at industrial sites. I would like to re-emphasise to members that the Scottish Government has set a strict framework for the regulation of industrial sites and takes the recent situation at Moss Morin extremely seriously. Parliament can be assured that we will continue to work closely with SEPA to understand the steps they are taking to ensure compliance at the site and to address the concerns of local residents. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.